Web Application and HTTP Basics Introduction In the early years of the Internet, most websites were constructed entirely of HTML pages. HTML pages are called static web pages, since they have all of their content embedded within them and they cannot be modified at execution time. As web technology became more sophisticated, websites started to incorporate various techniques to create or modify the pages at the time of the user's visit to the site, often in response to the user's input. These are called dynamic pages. Today, websites come in all kinds of styles, and most of them offer at least some type of dynamic features on their pages. The web technologies used to create these dynamic pages include plug-in web components, such as Java applets or Microsoft ActiveX controls. Programs to build dynamic web pages, such as CGI programs or ASP pages. An enter web. Distributed systems based on Java servlets and Java server pages. 3. 1. What is a web application? An obvious but still accurate definition of a web application is that it is an application that is accessible from the web. A common example of a web application is a website that provides free email service. It offers all the features of an email client such as Outlook Express, but is completely web-based. A key benefit of web applications is the ease with which the users can access the applications. All a user needs is a web browser. There is nothing else to be installed on the user's machine. This increases the reach of the applications tremendously while alleviating versioning and upgrading issues. A web application is built of web components that perform specific tasks and are able to expose their services over the web. For example, the Hello World servlet that we developed in Chapter 1 is a web component. Since it is complete in itself, it is also a web application. In real life, however, a web application consists of multiple servlets, JSP pages, HTML files, image files, and so forth. All of these components coordinate with one another and provide a complete set of services to users. 3. 1. One active and passive resources. One way of categorizing web resources is that they are either passive or active. A resource is passive when it does not have any processing of its own. Active objects have their own processing capabilities. For example, when the browser sends a request for MyServer.com, MyField, HTML, the web server at MyServer.com looks for the MyField. HTML file, a passive resource, and returns it to the browser. Similarly, when the browser sends a request for MyServer.com, report servlet, the web server at MyServer.com forwards the request to report servlet, an active resource. The servlet generates the HTML text on the fly and gives it to the web server. The web server, in turn, forwards it to the browser. A passive resource is also called a static resource, since its contents do not change with requests. A web application is usually a mixture of active and passive resources, but it is the presence of the active resources that make a web application nearly as interactive as normal applications. Active resources in a web application typically provide dynamic content to users and enable them to execute business logic via their browsers. 3. 1. Two web applications and the web application server. A web application resides in a web application server or application server. The application server provides the web application with easy and managed access to the resources of the system. It also provides low-level services, such as the HTTP protocol implementation and database connection management. A server container is just a part of an application server. In addition to the servlet container, an application server may provide other J2E components, such as an EJB container, a JNDI server, and a JMS server. You can find detailed information about J2E and application servers at HTTP, Java, Sun, Com, J2E. Examples of J2E application servers include BEA Systems Web Logic, IBM's WebSphere, and Sun's Java System Application Server. A web application is described using a deployment descriptor. 
A deployment descriptor is an XML document named Web. XML, and it contains the description of all the dynamic components of the web application. For example, this file has an entry for every servlet used in the web application. It also declares the security aspects of the application. An application server uses the deployment descriptor to initialize the components of the web application and to make them available to the clients. 3. To understanding the HTTP protocol. Simply put, the Hypertext Transfer Protocol is a request response based stateless protocol. A client sends an HTTP request for a resource and the server returns an HTTP response with the desired resource, as shown in Figure 3. 1. Figure 3. 1 HTTP is a request response based stateless protocol. A client opens a connection to the server and sends an HTTP request message. The client receives an HTTP response message sent by the server and closes the connection. It is stateless because once the server sends the response it forgets about the client. In other words, the response to a request does not depend on any previous requests that the client might have made. From the server's point of view, any request is the first request from the client. In the case of the Internet, the web browser is an HTTP client, the web server is an HTTP server, and the resources are HTML files, image files, servlets, and so forth. Each resource is identified by a unique uniform resource identifier URI. You will frequently hear three terms used interchangeably, URI, URL, and URN. Although they are similar, they have subtle differences. Uniform Resource Identifier a URI is a string that identifies any resource. Identifying the resource may not necessarily mean that we can retrieve it. URI is a superset of URL and URN. Uniform Resource Locator URIs that specify common Internet protocols such as HTTP, FTP, and mail to are also called URLs. URL is an informal term and is not used in technical specifications. Uniform Resource Name a urn is an identifier that uniquely identifies a resource but does not specify how to access the resource. Urns are standardized by official institutions to maintain the uniqueness of a resource. Here are some examples. Files. Sales. Report. HTML is a URI because it identifies some resource. However, it is not a URL because it does not specify how to retrieve the resource. It is not an either because it does not identify the resource uniquely. HTTP Manning Com Files Sales Report HTML is a URL because it also specifies how to retrieve the resource. ISBN 1 minus 930,110 minus 59 minus 6 is a urn because it uniquely identifies this book, but it is not a URL because it does not indicate how to retrieve the book. For more details on these terms, visit W3C.org.